crafty friends i'm back with the last of my makes for the tim holtz sizzix 2022 chapter one release and this make features the new 3d domisk embossing folder which is gorgeous and the really fun love struck colorized hearts and i added also the um, drop shadow alphanumeric and the tiny tattered florals so we'll talk about all of that in just a few minutes but I, my inspiration for this when i saw the domisk it's such a beautiful folder and um either side is just amazing but uh with this side i was looking at it and i thought you know that just looks like a tin roof tile to me um from you know some of those beautiful old buildings that have the tin tiles on the the ceiling and so i kind of wanted to to make something that mimicked that the best that i could and the first thing that i usually do when i get a die or an embossing folder is i just emboss it like this so this was my just first run through to see what it looked like and be able to touch it and kind of think about how i wanted to use it then what i did was uh, i uh, ran it through with some ink and then I put ink on top of it and all kinds of things. The colorize, if you look at the colorize hearts, you can see there are quite a few layers to them. And so you might remember the amazing make by Debbie Adams, where she used all of these hearts individually because they're, they're just beautiful hearts in and of themselves without even layering them. But I thought layering them on this piece gave it some dimension and texture to add to the background. And so I really liked that. Uh, I made them brown because I really wanted to pull out the details of the domisk in the background. I included, just for a little Valentine feel, I included the tattered roses from the tiny tattered florals. And those are really fun to make. They uh, they roll up very nicely with the Tim Holtz squeezers, <laughs> if you remember when he showed how to make those. So I'll be glad to show that later on uh, in this video also. Then uh, I used the drop shadow, and um, that was just very easy to cut out of some colored heavy stock. And then you just layer them together, and you end up actually with two sets because they um, actually this is a u because when you cut them out you have a shadow and you have the letter and lastly i finished it off with as a hanging so i wanted these to be like two uh, tiles that were hanging on the wall so you can hang it up and i threaded it through with just some i put some um, chipboard on the back some mat board and then i used my crocodile to put some large uh, Oh man, I don't even remember what these are called. Uh, eyelets, some large eyelets uh, through there uh, that I, I have had on hand for years, right? And then I made, I hung up with some of the wrinkle uh, ribbon. And I know that some people have been asking quite a bit about what do we use for the wrinkle crinkle ribbon. And I bought a ton of this Hug Snug washable. Um, it is a rayon woven edge seam binding. So I'm sure if you can't find Hug Snug in um, white and let's see what color is this one. This one's chalk white. I think I also got one in an ecru color. And uh, you just cut off the, the amount that you want and you spray it. I sprayed it with Kitsch Flamingo. That was the pink I wanted to use for this project. So I sprayed it with Kitsch Flamingo on my work surface and then just took this out and I just used it to fling a, a few drops onto my work surface and then spritzed water on it, crinkle it up, and then just let it dry. And there you have your crinkle ribbon and it's that simple to use. So I am sure that any woven edge rayon seam binding will most likely work just as well um, as the Hug Snug. And I thought I heard that this company may have even gone out of business. So I'm not sure. I bought this several years ago and 100 yards um, has lasted me for quite some time. So have fun with that. Also, I still have some of Tim's um, that I am hoarding and I only use it 
every once in a while on a super, super special make. So it has to be really special for me to break that out and use it because I really like it. It's a lot, it's wider than this and a little bit thicker. And so it's, if you have any of that, that's beautiful to use as well. So I hope that answers that question for that. Now let's uh, talk about um, putting the hearts together. Very simple. You're just layering it and you're following those embossed, just like any other color eyes. Um, you're just following the embossed um, impressions and also following your picture on the front. It does come with an arrow that I did not use. It is a one piece arrow and I cut it out several times and then it has um, some details on the end of the arrow and also on the point of the arrow that you can put on there. Um, I ended up not using this. I was going to hang um, this piece from it kind of like this or maybe put it in the center here and then I just decided against it altogether. But I know a lot of the other designers did, did go ahead and use the arrow and it does come with the set. So let's go ahead and much like my last one with the Domus or the uh, doily folder, I wanna show you how I kind of got some of the color down into this and then how I got the color on the edge to try and get it to look like one of those antique ceiling tiles. All right, so let's go ahead and um, that's what I'm gonna focus on for the rest of this tutorial is just trying to get um, a look that is similar to this. So let's get started. All right, so to make this tile look, um, I kind of made it by accident, so I'm going to do my best to replicate it. We may end up with something that we like better, and we may end up with something that um, isn't what we want, and so we'll just work with it from there. So the first thing that you will need for the first round is you're going to need a brown ink. Um, I'm going to go with Vintage Photo because I don't remember what color ink I used uh, when I made my, my original. This happens, you know, when you're just kind of making things um, as you go. You're going to need Distress Collage Medium in matte. You're going to need a Distress, distress Sprayer with water in it. And you are going to need your uh, embossing folders and then I have some paper so I'm gonna try two different papers this time actually for this I just went ahead and used my distress white heavy stock um, that I cut in my six by four and a quarter inch piece and that you know fits the whole thing but um, I also decided I wanted to try some of the um, watercolor cardstock and see if the ink moved differently on it and if it got a, a different look. So I want to try both of those. So let's go ahead and do that. And a little bit different on this one from the uh, doily. So with the doily, uh, we wanted the raised part to uh, stay white. And so we were... Um, doing the the flat area. Well, with this one, it's really hard to find the flat area because there isn't a big portion of flat area. So you may be tempted when you're doing this to go for the side that has all of this raised area on it. Um, but that's not really the side that you want to try and ink. You want to ink the side over here that has the little bit of raised area that's gonna go down into the crevices on this side, okay? So you kinda need to stop before you start <laughs> and think through what you're doing. So if you can feel this, this is the side that I want to come up, so you're going to ink the other side because these are the little parts that are gonna go down See, they're gonna go down and they're gonna give you that little bit of detail down in there. All right, so let's go ahead and give it a shot with Vintage Photo. We may decide that we want a different color next time, but I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try. So you're going to want to go ahead and pounce this on there. Try and get as much as you can onto those raised areas. Now you can do this. I did this with Distress Ink instead of the uh, a lot of times, especially with my wood grain embossing folder, I will use my, um, the archival, but I want this to move with the water and I want it to wick a little bit. And so I wanted to use the distress ink for that. All right. So now I'm going to, this was the first one I used, so I'm going to see how it looks. I'm going to wet both sides and I'm going to give this a couple of spritzes and then I'm going to go ahead and lay this on there 
Well, I have to leave it because I dropped it, but okay. You don't want it to move too much. All right, hold that. I'm gonna pull my Big Shot fold away out. I'm using my Big Shot fold away. And if you will, uh, if you didn't see my last tutorial with the doily, I would encourage you to watch that if you're not sure about the sandwiches and all of that. But I have my standard platform. I have my paper in my 3D. I'm kind of turning it to the edge just a little bit or to the side a little bit. I'm gonna put my one plate on there, my one cutting plate, and now I'm gonna put it through. And because it's a heavy stock, I don't need to do it three times, but I did it three times anyway on all of mine because I really wanted a sharp image. And you hold it so that it doesn't pop open and it doesn't move while you're doing this. Okay. Now, I'm gonna pull that out. I'm gonna put this to the side over here. And let's see what it looks like. It looks like it shifted a little bit, which is fine on this one. On the doily, I did not want it to shift. All right, so that looks to be a little darker than the one I used originally. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just spritz it down and see if I can get that to wick a little bit, which it is wicking just a tiny bit. And then what I did is I dried it with my heat tool. And I'm not going to do that right now because I don't have a, a heat safe surface. So I'm going to set this aside and we're going to try it on our watercolor cardstock. And we'll see if we can find any difference between the two. So I'm going to set this aside. Let me wipe off my surface here and let's get my watercolor paper ready. I'm going to use the same color even though I think I would want to try maybe brushed corduroy or pumice stone the next time. So I'm going to go ahead and try and get it on all those raised surfaces. did three so we'll hopefully get it to wick okay let's go ahead and put that in there I can't turn it too much with this paper to move around a little bit and you can see it wicking out this way okay and I really wanted to kind of move around a little bit so what I'm going to do I'm letting that move a little bit you can see it kind of wicking out to the edge here I'm going to go ahead and just wipe some of that off and it's down in there quite a bit. So I'm going to off camera, I'm going to dry both of these. You can see there's quite a difference between the two, right? So I'm going to dry both of these and then I'm going to put my collage medium on and I'll show you how I did that. So let me get out my little travel thing and we will put a little collage medium on them. All right, my friends. Well, this is what they look like after drying. And, you know, I actually think I like this better still uh, because it left a lot of the white on the raised area. And so I like that better. 
um, than this one for looking like a tile, but we'll see once I'm done. So now before I put the collage medium on it, I wanted to make sure that I had some dark areas. You know how on um, tin tiles, how it is always like very like a dark brown around the edges and on some of the raised areas where the, the paint wears off and that's kind of the look I was going for. So all I did for that was I just took my ground espresso distress ink pad and I just went over around the edges. Now this one I didn't cut off, so you're gonna wanna cut it around the edges to really be able to, to get the edges nicely. But I just, see how that brings out that detail? And it kind of looks like that worn, um, and you kind of want to be careful to try and just get the edge as so angle it a little bit when you're going over some of these so that you just get the edge that that is going over it and you're not doing this. So you want to get that edge just to get those details to kind of, you know, and you just, you don't want it perfect. You just want some of those details to be showing up where it would probably be wearing away if it was on the ceiling. All right. So that kind of gives you an idea. And I love the way that looks. Um, I just would want it uh, to have a little bit more of a, I think, um, of a difference. Now this, I need to try and get the edges flat as we go over it. Okay, so I'm going to go around this one. And then just lightly on those edges or the corner. Kind of in the center. And then on some of them, I just really went in and tried to really kind of get some of those edges quite dark where it would have just gotten really rusty and worn away. So I just really kind of pressed in on those areas to give it that look. And you can kind of do it in different places on the sides as you go around, because usually the sides were the ones that would get worn away a lot more than, you know, that center area. So, yeah, I like that. All right. So yeah, I ended, see, I ended up liking that better than I thought I was going to. Okay, so there you can see we've got kind of our areas where we tried to make it look like it was worn and rusty. And if you wanted it even darker, you could go in with a little black soot kind of on some of those corners or areas where you really wanted it to look worn and as if that edge had been around for decades, right? All right, so I would dry that and make sure it was completely dry, which I'm gonna do in a minute before I do my next step because I really want it to, to make sure that the ink is set before I add my collage medium because it is wet and so it will cause that ink to move a little bit more. So let's get them dry before we move to our next step. These are dry now, and if you look at this one, you can see where even though I used the edge, I kind of went over it and you can kind of see that it doesn't look very authentic, but I'm not too worried about that because once I add the collage medium, I think that's really going to kind of, uh, it's going to react to the collage medium and it will soften it, and so I don't think that it's going to be much of a problem, so let's just give this a try. So the next thing that I did was to take my collage medium, put it on my finger, and I just put it on here and I just used my fingers and I just rubbed it in and tried to get it all over into those crevices. So it, it may have looked like I used 
the vintage collage medium, but I didn't need to because I used Distress Ink on this folder. And I knew that even though I dried it completely, that it would react. And so I'm really kind of pushing it down into those crevices. And I'm trying to use this that's on there because you can see I'm getting a little bit of that color off on my fingers and I don't want to get it into my collage medium. All right, so as I went ahead and pushed it down into those crevices, it kind of brightened it a little. And then as it dries, it gives it kind of that sheen that a tile would have. So that is the watercolor one. I'm back, sorry about that, I had a little battery problem. All right, so this is the watercolor one. This is the white heavy stock, so let's see how it works when I add my collage medium to this one. And that Distress Ink, although dry, will still react. See, you can see it reacting. And I am gonna go ahead and keep working it in there until I get the look I want. That's pretty good. And I want it smooth. I don't want to see too many of the fingerprints, but you can definitely see how that ink still reacts even though it's completely dry. And I like this because it gives a little bit more um, of a difference, a contrast between the light card stock, whereas this one, you lose a lot of that. So I actually think that this card stock was the way to go originally. So I'm glad I did that originally. All right, let's work on this side just a little bit. And then I will show you how I finished up, which was just really quite simple to finish it up once this was dry and smooth. Remember, I don't want to have too much of my fingerprints showing through on that. Okay. There you go. I really like that. So it's a little different from my original but same technique, and I think I actually like this one even better. Um, but that's how you do it. And for these, I used, so this one's facing this way, and this one is facing this way, so that you could see the two different parts of this single domesk because it has this beautiful kind of almost winged leaf edge up here and then you have the leaves coming in from the bottom down here so such a lovely embossing texture fade all right so to finish this piece it was fairly simple i used my crocodile uh to at to attach the eyelets but before i did that i put each panel on a piece of the sizzix Sizzle, little Sizzles mat board and it comes in white and cream and I really like it. It's a nice thick heavy mat board uh, and it will run through your steel rule dies beautifully. You can cut things from the steel rule dies. So I keep a, a stock of that on hand. So that I attached them with collage medium so that they were sturdy panels and then I just punched through holes in each corner with my crocodile and attached a large eyelet through each hole and then I just thread threaded the um, crinkle ribbon that I made through the holes and I tied a ribbon at the top and I tied two little knots at the bottom and then once that was done I went ahead and put my hearts in place attached them with collage medium I attached the little uh, tiny um, the tiny tattered roses and in that comes some little several different sizes of little leaves that you can attach and these are fairly simple once you cut them out you just hold them and roll them up so they come out like a little kind of a pinwheel look to them when you cut them and then 
what you do is you use this and the pad and I roll over it to kind of get those little petals to roll up. You want to take the squeezers, you attach it to the first petal, all right, and then let them hold it. And then I just went around and rolled it up like this. This one's been rolled, so it just ripped, but that's okay. Go ahead and roll it all the way up. And once you get it rolled all the way up, it it won't it won't rip like that on you. I've just done this too many times to it. Um, once you get it all rolled up, you'll put a little bit of glue on this inside petal and push it down and let it dry. And once it dries, then I go ahead and I go in with these and I press them down to make the rose just kind of move out just a little bit and separate, but once it's dry, I do that, okay? After I kind of push it down into the glue, let it dry. And then you can just attach it any way you want. These and the letters are Kitsch Flamingo as well as the ribbon. They're done with Kitsch Flamingo Distress, Distress Spray with a little bit of walnut to give it some color. And this is uh, walnut ink. And then these were just various shades of all the different Distress Browns. I did each one a different color of Distress Brown so that as we went up, they just kind of would hopefully show a little bit of contrast with each other. And then you just attach the I Love You and um, the leaves and things like that, and you're good to go. In order to get these to stay, because they are do have a shadow, and some of them have this little inside piece, so what I did to with that is that I would put, um, I'll show you on this one. I would put just a little piece of heavy stock that I, you know, cut it out with. I would cut a thin piece that would fit behind it. And I would, I glued it behind it so that it would hold those pieces in. So this one, like I would have cut off here. So it wouldn't show when I turned it back over. And then that allowed me to go ahead and attach it without, you know, things falling out. So, because this has to, see like that and so you want to be able to have it um, stay together so there you go something like that and that allows it to stick to something on the back and then you can put it on without it falling apart okay so that's how I did all of that and lickety split you have a wall hanging for Valentine's Day or any day that you want to celebrate love all right. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, feel free to email me uh, through my blog and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Um, and I hope that that inspires you to get out those 3D embossing folders and just start playing and have a good time. So have a crafty day, my friends.